Greetings, Eugene is here with another tutorial. This video will cover the topic of the so-called polyrhythms. We will tell you about the usage of polyrhythms in drums, which we think is more complex and important than performing them on a guitar, for example. The goal of this video is not to show you different examples, but to teach you how to be able to analyze, understand and develop them on your own. We find this approach much more efficient and flexible than just blindly memorizing the patterns. If you completely understand what's going on, you can easily modify them, change something and still be able to catch up quickly rather than learning the modified pattern from the very beginning. We will now talk about the thing we call shifting patterns. They consist of a leading pattern and a shifting one. The leading pattern is what most drummers are used to and can be roughly summarized as, for example, four cymbal hits forming a single bar. The shifting pattern is a rhythmic pattern that's shorter or longer than the leading one. These patterns create shifts, which means each bar will sound differently. Playing all of them ends up having a cycle. The less difference between a length of a bar and a shifting pattern, the more times you need to play it to end the cycle and to be able to start from the beginning. We call this the complexity of the shift. We usually use percentage which represents a part of the cycle that is completed after playing one shift. We're gonna demonstrate this a bit later. Shifting patterns can be grouped according to the limbs which perform a certain task. Type number one. The cymbal and the snare play the leading pattern, while the kick plays the shifting pattern. We start with the cymbal and the bass drum only. A simple example of a kick pattern. Let's call one kick pattern a block. We see that the length of a block is shorter than the length of four cymbal hits. So combining them would result in a shift with the kick starting on the upbeat every second block. This pattern has a 50% shift because after finishing one block, you're halfway through the whole cycle. So it would take two blocks to restart the whole thing. Now we add a snare drum. The pattern of the snare is proportional to the cymbal and won't create a new shift. The complexity of the combined pattern will depend on the frequency of the snare drum. The more often you hit it, the shorter will be the cycle. Use your imagination to create various patterns for your feet. Here are some more difficult examples of the first type involving double bass. This is an important part of the tutorial, one of the main reasons we did this video in the first place. So how do you actually learn all these confusing patterns? What you definitely should not do is trying to memorize it by listening to it over 9000 times. That's just unpractical. A lot of musicians do that and it's easy if the whole pattern is simple. But when it comes to longer and more complicated shifts, it can give you a hard time.
So the reason you watch this video is to understand how to properly analyze and decompose these patterns. You will be able to create your own shifting patterns while having a sort of background knowledge and not just by jamming randomly. Even if you can't read scores, it's very helpful if you write down your ideas in any form of tabs you prefer. So the most obvious thing what you should start with is to learn the shifting pattern. It shouldn't be too hard without the symbol like the snare. A lot of musicians recommend singing your drum patterns. Some people stubbornly refuse to do this, which we think is a big mistake. Our voice is actually an additional limb that our brain can use. It's much easier to coordinate your limbs if you sing your patterns first. So after learning the kick line, try singing it while playing the cymbal. You'll find that easier to accomplish than to play with your hand and foot right away. After you feel comfortable, we suggest that you add the snare. So the leading hand plays the cymbal, the weak hand plays the snare, and you sing the kick. Last step is to play the kick pattern with your foot. We advise you to divide the whole cycle into at least two or four parts and get used to the shift separately. Later combine them while playing all blocks together. I usually chatter the kick line with my two middle incisors and smash the left canines as a snare, for I am right-handed. Skip the kick if it's played simultaneously with the snare, thus chattering only your canines. You'll be able to jump in anytime even if you fall off the beat. Counting helps you to know how far away does the beginning of a block shift and it's the same distance added to the previous starting point after each pattern. If you have a shift of 50% complexity, your second block starts on the downbeat if you started with the snare on the upbeat. If it's 25%, then it's gonna be one fourth after playing the pattern once, on the downbeat after the second block, three fourths of a snare pattern after the third, and finally on the upbeat starting the whole cycle again. While singing and chattering your teeth performs the pattern, nodding can be used as the leading riff. Not as often as you need playing half, fourth, eighth notes and so on. The less frequently you nod, the harder is to perform the pattern. Learning a certain pattern is really practical because you don't need a kit or even drumsticks. All you need to do is to show your brain which links when you want to use. And you can do that absolutely quietly, not disturbing the environment. Singing, chattering and tapping will help you to understand and get used to a pattern quickly and effortlessly. Type number two. The cymbal plays the leading pattern, while the snare follows the kick and they form the shifting pattern. The number of blocks in a cycle will only depend on the frequency of the cymbal. In this case, the snare and the bass drum are one pattern. A simple example with two blocks. This type of shifting pattern is slightly harder than type number one. The reason is that the number of limbs performing the shift is two, while you are leading with one. The way to learn it is more or less the same, but we suggest to memorize the kick and snare simultaneously. After that, play the cymbal while singing the pattern. That's the first step. But this might be not enough, so we recommend to play the cymbal and snare without the feet. Since they also form a shift, it's important to feel comfortable while playing them. Later on, add the kick by singing it. 
And finally, combine all three. Take your time, because this might be really challenging. An example for the second type with a double bass pattern. Now we add a snare on each last kick. Finally, add the cymbal. In case of longer patterns, you should count parts of a block. In this example, the bass drum hits are 4, 4, 4, 3 in each block, so a simple approach would be to play the kick while nodding the cymbal. After that, play the cymbal with the snare while singing the kick line. And finally combine everything. This may take a while, so just start slowly and be very patient. Number three, snare, leading rhythm, kick and cymbal, pattern. This one perhaps is the hardest, because most of the drummers are used to lead with a cymbal. And in this case, the snare is playing the leading rhythm. The kick and cymbal form the pattern that is shifting. We start with the following simple example. Then we add a cymbal on the first and second kick. After learning the bass drum pattern, we suggest to synchronize the leading snare with the shifting cymbal first. Afterwards, add a singing kick to this. Later, transport your singing to your feet. A much harder example with a longer pattern. We add a symbol on the first single kicks of a sub block, then on all second kicks of the double. Finally, adding the regular straight snare, which yields a shifting pattern with 25% complexity and pretty hard to perform. We want to demonstrate to you a brief example of how would a real polyrhythm look like having two different rhythms played by two separate limbs. We call this one the 3 b which has a classic drum and bass pattern and a dotted fourth note cymbal. interesting usage of this trick to switch between a tempo and its dotted fourth note parallel tempo. To change that you simply multiply the BPM by one third in our case. So if you play the drum and bass pattern at 180 BPM, your actual cymbal can be played as simple fourth notes at 120 BPM.
Probably some of you have doubts whether using the aforementioned polyrhythms in your songs would actually attract any audience. These bizarre shifts can hardly be called mainstream, and the less mainstream is something, the less people will like it. So in this last part, we will talk about simplifying these patterns to a more familiar 4, 8 or 16 bar shape. That's what our ears are most used to. Now we have to count the hits of the leading pattern. Here's an example from a well-known piece. It takes 7 snare hits to complete a cycle. The number of snare hits we need should be divisible by 4. 7 is not. Playing the cycle twice would result in 14 snare hits. Playing it 4 times results in 28 snare hits and 7 big blocks. Which still leaves us with a sense of incompleteness because our ear wants to hear either 4 or 8 big blocks. What they do is they stop after the 4th snare and restart the cycle before finishing it completely. We still get a shift, but while listening to it, we feel when it is supposed to change to something entirely new. It gives the listener a nice feeling and allows him to keep track of the song and head back to it. Of course these are not all the types of polyrhythms. You can also lead with your kick or weak foot and play the shifting pattern with your hands. There are a lot of combinations, we just wanted to give you a basic idea. The methods we've shown you to learn these patterns were really natural for us. As we said, in our opinion it makes much more sense to learn them like this and it helps you to understand these patterns better. We thank you for your attention and the positive feedback I got in my previous tutorial. I will definitely do more tutorials in the future, just make sure that you let me know below in the comments what would you like me to teach you. Like and share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel, add me, follow me wherever you'd like and don't hesitate to contact me. Bye bye, Eugene out.